Bradley won in 1945, tipped Churchill out onto his well-upholstered uh, posterior mm -hmm. and began to change Britain in ways that remain uh, extant today. Absolutely, and it was in many ways an unlikely victory if one were to look at 1935 when Attlee became the leader of a Labour Party that was beaten and broken by the ratting of Ramsay MacDonald to a national government after which he was expelled from Labour never to return. But Attlee worked steadily and quietly to rebuild the party from the mid-1930s onward and when he got into government in 1945, the most understated man in Britain Britain, perhaps, was able to affect changes to the country that continue to shape the country to this day. The idea that one shouldn't be homeless because of a permanent welfare state, the idea of a modern comprehensive national insurance program, the National Health Service, the idea that no one based on age, race, and most especially class should be rejected from seeing a surgeon, from seeing a GP, from getting any kind of medical care. These were reforms. Forms brought this in was by socialism Atlee. in practice, wasn't it? I mean, the National Health Service, when people say they don't like socialism, uh, you just have to uh, tell them that the National Health Service is literally socialism in action. It is, yes. What else could it possibly be called? It's not a business. It's not a charity. It's the government, through tax money, running a system that benefits public welfare. Now... Uh...